Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for giving my speech. <laughs> and I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Probably wish I would. It's kind of a little warm in here. Today, we witness a tradition long standing in the United States Coast Guard change of command as the new admiral assumes leadership of our nation's oldest continuous seagoing service. And it's both a, a connection to earliest days as a nation and a new milestone in our history. We use those phrases lightly, but this is a big deal. Admiral Linda Fagan, Coast Guard Academy, class of 1985. <laughs> class of 85, stand up if you're out there. As they say in Southern Delaware, you all knew it then, didn't you? <laughs> well, you've crewed the Polar Star and Heavy Icebreaker. You've, you've captained the Port of New York. You've served in all seven continents. And you've commanded the Coast Guard operation in the Pacific. You've served as Vice Commandant of the Coast Guard. Throughout her decades of service, she's demonstrated an exceptional skill, integrity, and commitment to our country. She upholds the highest traditions of the United States Coast Guard. This moment of uh, acceleration of global challenges and hybrid threats but don't stop at any border. There's no one more qualified to lead the proud women and men of the Coast Guard and she will also be the first woman to serve as Commandant of the Coast Guard, the first woman to lead any branch of the United States Armed Forces. And it's about time. <laughs> Secretary of Defense, when he sent me the name, I said, what in the hell took you so long? Really, congratulations. Look, with her trailblazing career, Admiral Fagan shows that young people, young people entering the service, and we mean when we say there are no doors, no doors closed to women. And I might add, that includes her daughter, Coast Guard Lieutenant Eileen Fagan. Now, the, I'm thoroughly embarrassed you, haven't I? You look like my son used to look. as a Vice President Biden and his son, Major Biden. And I go, oh, Dad. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Not meant to embarrass, it's meant to compliment. Every little kid growing up today who dreams of serving their country will know that, that this is what an admiral and a service chief of the United States Armed Forces looks like. I mean it sincerely. It matters. I concluded when I ran, by the way, that I make sure that my government, my administration, and the service look like America. I want to thank you, Admiral Fagan, for taking the helm during this critical moment. And for all that you've done throughout your career to open the doors of opportunities a little bit wider to allowing those following behind you a way through. I want to acknowledge your family. We're here to support you, and you've supported you every day, just as they have throughout your career. John, where John, where are you? I'm going to embarrass you. John, stand up, will you? Come on. John, we don't know one another, but we have something in common. We both married way above our station. And Maura and Eileen and your parents, John and Luann, where, where's mom and dad? I watched dad watching that young woman in the honor guard come around with that rifle. You did it. You, had a, you, you moved quickly, dad. All kidding aside, thank you for the values you instill. It matters. It matters a great deal to both, both of you. And uh, I, uh, you know, from the time that she was a swab, it, it, it just is amazing. I want to thank you for sharing Admiral Fagan with us, and, uh, and Admiral Schultz, thank you for leading our Coast Guard as Commandant over the last four years. Stellar capstone only four decades of outstanding service to the nation. I got the advantage of doing, for I think the third time in my career, the Academy commencement, and you're second to last one. 
And uh, he also has a young man, good-looking boy, man, who was, uh, who, was, who was also commissioned at the time. So I don't think we've seen the last of this. To Dawn and to all the children, Lindsay, Kelsey, uh, as an Annalise, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And, and, and is that right? And, and Zach, Zachary, and Ensign Schultz. Where's Ensign Schultz? Is he here? He's underway. For those of you, for those of you who are not in the military, underway doesn't mean they're late on the way here. I just want to say, <laughs> say underway in my family, they think, where, where the hell are they? But look, it's not just those who wear the uniform who serve. And I've said this many times, it's the whole family. As an English poet said, they also serve who only stand and wait. They also serve who only stand and wait. Many times, your son your, 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 was on, your daughter was on patrol somewhere. And you, were, you wondered, or your, or your wife, or your mom. You stand there and you wait for the year my son was in Iraq. When the year before that, when he was eight months, he was six months. He was in, in, uh, in, in the Balkans. My mother, my wife, would stand there at the coffee, uh, at the sink, drinking that coffee, just saying a prayer every day. So to all of you, we owe you. We owe you big. Thank you for all that you've done for the country over the years. We've asked a lot of you, and you've risen to every challenge. I also want to thank the women and men of the Coast Guard who are standing watch today and every day here at home and around the globe, including my military aide who is here today, Lieutenant Commander Jane McCarran. Where, where is she? I'm going to embarrass the devil out of her, but she — I asked — she's hiding somewhere. I admit her to the Academy and ask her to come with us. Our nation is grateful to all of you for your years of service and your continued service. And as we look to the years and the decades ahead, the Coast Guard is only going to play an increasingly prominent role in our homeland and our national security. The challenges we face continue to evolve, and the choices we make today are literally going to shape the direction of the world throughout the 21st century. What we do the next 10 years is going to lay it down. We'll be calling on the Coast Guard more and more frequently, as you know, to underwrite the international maritime security, to keep the sea lanes open and secure, to uphold a rules-based international order, to protect the waters, as was mentioned, through which nearly one-quarter of the United States' GDP is transported, to manage the impact of climate change becoming more extreme, more extreme weather and growing migration flows. In addition, you see what's happened in the Arctic. Arctic is going to change drastically and become much a place that is going to also potentially generate potential conflict in terms of dominating the Arctic as it melts. The Coast Guard is a central element to the administration's new Indo-Pacific strategy, building partnerships with nations throughout the region to take on illegally and unreported and unregulated fishing, reported the shared threats that conduct and coordinate human environmental missions. I met yesterday with the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Part of what we're initiating now is there's another country that is literally eating up all of the fishing grounds, literally overfishing everything. We've decided that we have to be engaged, and we have to be engaged with our Coast Guard and our military, our Navy. And with the climate change accelerating, we're seeing more frequent and more intense storms carry devastating impacts across our nation and throughout the hemisphere. Admiral Schultz, you oversaw the Coast Guard's response to the most active hurricane season on record in 2020. 30 named storms, 12 of which impacted the Gulf and Atlantic coast, and the Coast Guard was there for every single one of them. And with today marking the official first day of the 2020 hurricane season, we're anticipating the seventh straight year above average hurricane activity in the Atlantic. We turn to the Coast Guard to help facilitate our national response to COVID-19, from helping with vaccinations to protecting ports and maritime supply chains. We rely, we rely on the Coast Guard to interdict illicit drug shipments at sea before they can enter the United States and respond to the greatly increased migration flows from Americas. Folks, and Admiral Fagan, 
we know. We know there's more work to be done to ensure the Coast Guard and all the branches of our armed forces reflect the full strength and diversity, including at the highest levels of our leadership. When Admiral Fagan commissioned in 1985, <coughs> only five years after the first woman graduated from the Academy, she was one of just 16 commissioned female ensigns, only 8 percent of her graduating class. She's the only woman aboard Polar Star for the first set of orders. Currently, Corps of Cadets at the Academy, more than 1,000 cadets strong, 40 percent are women. 40 percent are women. Admiral Fagan is part of a generation of pioneering women in the force, and this ceremony is historic and a historic first in that effort. Promotion earned through a career of outstanding leadership and accomplishment. Now we need to keep working to make sure Admiral Fagan may be the first, but not the only person. We need to see more women at the highest levels of command in the Coast Guard and across every service in the armed forces. We need to ensure women have an opportunity to succeed and thrive throughout their professional careers, and that means providing support and resources so women can compete fairly and fully for promotions and make sure women are not penalized in their career for having children. It also means creating an environment where every member of the armed forces feels safe in the ranks, including from sexual assault and harassment, and where their contributions are respected. So thank you again, Admiral Schultz, for your dedicated service to our nation and your steady leadership through the years at the Coast Guard. He's been called to into, into new missions and asked to serve in extremely difficult circumstances. And thank you, Admiral Fagan, for accepting this next mission and this great responsibility to lead the women and men of the Coast Guard, the finest Coast Guard in the world. The Coast Guard is Semper Paratus, always ready, always ready. I know that you're ready for all that's ahead of you, and I look forward to watching you execute your job. Again, thank you. May God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Admiral Schultz. Admiral Schultz, would you please? Testing. OK, sorry about that. Pres Admiral Schultz, would you please join President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas on stage so they can formally recognize your accomplishments? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Military members, attention to award. Citation to accompany the award of the Homeland Security Distinguished Service Medal to Admiral Carl L. Schultz, United States Coast Guard. Admiral Schultz is cited for extraordinary meritorious service to the government of the United States in a position of great responsibility as the 26th Commandant of the Coast Guard from June 2018 to June 2022. Operating amidst a competing national priorities, Admiral Schultz expertly led the Coast Guard's monumental recapitalization of its legacy fleet of cutters and aircraft while aligning the service with Department of Homeland Security and Department of Defense strategic priorities. Through bold vision and resolve, he set clear direction for the service, championed efforts to foster a more diverse and inclusive workforce, and established an ambitious strategic plan ensuring the Coast Guard's 81,000 active duty, reserve, civilian, and auxiliary members were Semper Paratus always ready to protect the homeland, enhance economic prosperity, and advance America's national interests. Exercising keen decisional agility and foresight, Admiral Schultz masterfully led the workforce through some of the most challenging times in our nation's history, including the COVID-19 global pandemic, a 35-day partial government shutdown, the busiest hurricane seasons on record, increased Coast Guard support to Southwest border operations and Operations Allies Welcome, response to mass migration events in Haiti, evolving cybersecurity threats, escalating tensions with Iran, and a national defense strategy focused on great power competition with China and Russia. 
He championed organizational changes to enhance oversight and improve efficiency while spearheading the on-schedule and on-budget delivery of national security and fast response cutter programs of record, the advancement of offshore patrol cutter and waterways commerce cutter programs, and awarded the multi-mission polar security cutter contract. Admiral Schultz's unmatched ingenuity and visionary leadership resulted in the implementation of the Coast Guard's groundbreaking Arctic, cyber, and maritime commerce strategies addressing 21st century marine transportation security challenges and actions vital to the sustainment of more than 30 million American jobs and 5.4 trillion in annual U.S. maritime economic activity. His tireless efforts have positioned the service with a tremendous capable blend of assets and enabling support resources necessary to protect and advance United States interests around the globe for decades to come. His extraordinary achievements culminate a truly distinguished 39-year career of selfless service to the men and women of the United States Coast Guard and the United States of America. Admiral Schultz's leadership, dedication, and devotion to duty are most heartily commended and are in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Coast Guard and the Department of Homeland Security, given this first day of June 2022, signed the Honorable Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security. Please be seated.